and she's going to speak on what it's like working at the truck stop. Myself, I had to sleep with 14 people that day for low amounts of money. It ruined me. After the 14th, it was every day of my life sleeping with 14 to 30 men every day, going to different parts of Tennessee, walking the streets, being forced to do them and make that money. Every 2009, in the summertime, I was promoted to work at the truck stop, the TA, the TA truck stop. That's when I became a lot lizard, that's what they call them. The goal was to walk around the truck stop in a circle and uh, whatever truck driver wants to see, they'll flash the lights. I worked there for a year. I was raped at the truck stop several times. I was beat up. I had to recruit women. I don't know if you know the term of choosing up, but my job was to take another woman from their p by telling lies about my p saying, He's a good daddy, you get off days, and they'll choose up, I take their money, I give it to him, and then they'll come to the house, and those are his women now. That's what you call choosing up, and uh, working at the truck stop caused more trauma to me, because if you got robbed, don't help you, they'll say, get my money or I'll kill you. I had to do a lot of figuring out being at the truck stop. I had a lot of growing up to do. No, and I couldn't tell them man my age. They didn't care, I don't think, anyway, because they knew I was young. I wasn't even fully developed like I am now. Working the truck stop for a year caused me to be more into a point where I'm, I'm just shutting down. The drugs have already took over me. I didn't want to live no more. I was up here just hoping someone killed me. I was used. I said, nobody gonna, gonna want me. Nobody's gonna love nobody like me. I asked. I prayed. I was, I was hoping for an escape and I thought God abandoned me. So I lost myself. And um, one on 2009, November, I'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life. His woman, the white woman, his bottom fell in love with a trick at the truck stop. She abandoned me. I was looking for her for an hour. The was calling me. He said, what the hell is? She's planning her escape. She has his keys. She has everything. I go to the truck. The truck driver chases me with a knife and they proceed to take off. I'm telling him they about to leave. He said, if you don't get my keys, I'm a throat so you know what I did I hopped on and once he got in the car there's a little compartment where you can hold on to where they shut the truck I rode on the back of that hanging off because we was at exit 42 he went up to I think Laverne the people at Waffle House two guys followed me and they called the police because I was hanging on my whole objective was to get the keys that's it. So once he stopped, she didn't even, they didn't even know I was hanging on the back of the truck. We rolled for about a mile and a half. It was cold uh, and I held on. As soon as it opened up, I punched her in the face. I got the keys. The police was there. It was a whole bunch of going down. I hurried up. The p met me there and he congratulated me for getting his keys, the money. He said he didn't even want the he was like, I can't believe you rode on a truck. He was like, so I'm gonna give you an hour off to work. So me risking my life on an 18-wheeler did absolutely nothing, but it made my job more harder. The ending part of me coming to the end, let me go back for a minute. Once that one white woman left, and didn't come back. They took me to a underground bunny ranch in uh, Dallas, Texas. Believe it or not, an underground bunny ranch. A lot of people are not familiar with that, but um, it's where a group of girls, about 15 girls is in there. They line up powerful people, people of power line up and come sleep with us. Because I was new, I stayed there for six months. I made them a lot of money. I paid my house fee. I was the top booked girl because they knew I was underage and they paid more for me. My Our rewards was a phone call to our daddies and let them know the progress. That was our reward. And um, he had to follow rules. You couldn't step on nobody's money or anything. And I graduated, so to say. I was the highly ranked book. I probably made them over $2 million. I didn't see a dime. My job was to just get dressed, 
wash my body. Everything was, sometimes the clients will pay to tie me up. And that's when I got concerned to be tied up and hog tied. I never knew if it was gonna be my last time. The final straw was December in 2000, in 2009. I was getting, I was coming back from being there. I'm back at the truck stop again. And this is where the hellish nightmare became. A client that I've seen before, he said, I want to see you. It was a thousand dollars on the line. So I was like, wow, a thousand dollars. I'm going to go ahead and do it. He paid me and then he had five other people come in the truck and I got raped and I got beat up. Nobody, nobody used protection. They had beat me up so bad. They took my body lifeless and tied me to a pole behind one of the trucks and they took off. It was, it was winter time. A white woman found me and called the police. That was the final straw for me. The problem is the healing aspect. When you've been stuck on drugs for so long and I didn't see no value in myself. I, I didn't want to live no more. I didn't want to see the value. I didn't have a value. I was ran through. I felt like the scum of the earth and I can honestly say that to you. It changes your life and I think people need to be more understanding about their surroundings and who they allow to be around them. Cause you never know this, the darkest day of my life.